Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Father, no one can question you. You do not report to any man. You are not dependent on any man. You are God all by yourself. Whether we accept it or not, you are a God. You live without us, without us you remain God. We did not vote you to power, we will never, never be able to remove you. Father, there is no impeachment when it comes to you. You are the king of all ages, you are the God of all creations. You are the beginning, the end, the alpha, the omega, the one in between. Thank you, O oh God, because you are the one who writes our story like no one else can. Thank you, O oh God, because you are the one who ordained our life. You are the one who knows our future and our now. Thank you for the beautiful things you are writing. Thank you for the script concerning our lives. Thank you for your power even in our lives. Lord, we exalt you. We've come this morning to say thank you. We lay it to heart to say thank you. For your mercy, for your goodness, for your kindness. We lay to heart to say thank you. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Can I have a believing amen? That, be, that amen is not with freedom. Can I have a freedom inspired amen? Hallelujah. Luke 1 for the five seconds, Timothy chapter 1 and then verse 7. Are you there? Did you see my script before? <laughs> how did you how did you find it so fast? Luke chapter 1. All things being equal, the book of Luke should be in the New Testament in your Bible. If you did not have to rearrange it this morning. Luke chapter 1 and then verse 45. Are you there? All right, Luke 1 45. The Bible speaking says, Blessed is she who believed. For there will be a fulfillment of those things which are told are from the Lord. Blessed is she who believe, for there shall be a fulfillment of that which was told are even of the Lord. And then we do 2 Timothy chapter 1. Are you there? Oh, go, la, Second Timothy chapter 1 and then verse 7. The Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. For God has not given you. Look at your neighbor, help me preach that sermon one minute. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. This morning I have a message from the Lord and I'm sure it will bless you, transform you because God does not just send a word because he's not busy. He sent his word because there is something to be fulfilled in the life of his people. So this morning I'm speaking on a question and the, sermon, the title of my sermon is Is God potent? Can he perform? Is God potent? That's a comma. Is God potent? Can he perform? Is God potent? Help me look at your neighbor and say, Is God potent? George, is God potent? Is God potent? Can he perform? Father, thank you for the entrance of your word. We bring light this morning. Thank you, God, because you are the Lord who sends his word. And you fulfill the purpose for sending it. Lord, you have given me your word for your people. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. I make myself an oracle. And I speak not from the wisdom of man. 
but I speak from the wisdom of your spirit. Lord, after now, let the purpose for sending your word be fulfilled. Let us all be better people. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. Let us believe you for more. Let us walk according to the move even of God for our generation. We exalt and we thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. Amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. Is God potent? Is God potent? Can he perform? Is God potent? Can he perform? Luke chapter 1 verse 45, the King James says, And blessed is she that believe there shall be a performance of those things which were told are from the Lord. I love the J.B. Phillips translation. The Bible says, Oh, happy is that woman who believes in God, for he does make his promises to her come to pass. He does make his promises come to pass. The NIV says, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Do you have God's promises? Blessed are you if you believe. Blessed are you if you believe. The message translation says you are blessed because you believe what the Lord will do, that the Lord will do what he has said. Do you believe the Lord will do what he has said? Do you believe the Lord will do what he has said? Listen, the word performance speaks of an act. The word performance speaks of an act. It's not a docile word. It's not a passive word. It's a word that speaks that when the Lord says it in, he also has the ability to also do it. When they talk about someone who can perform, we are speaking of the ability to act, ability to do. Um, so the question this day is, is God potent? Can he perform? You know, many times when people doubt the reality of God, they are not doubting whether the Lord exists. You see, when people say, I don't believe in God, they are not, they are not telling you that God is not existing. They are actually saying that they cannot see him act. They cannot see him act in the world. They cannot see him act in their life. They cannot see him act in their family. They cannot see him act even in their business. So when people doubt the reality of God, they are not saying that, oh, you know, because many of us think they are saying God does not exist. No, they are not saying that. They are saying, I can't see him. I've searched all over and I cannot find him. The Bible says in Psalms 103 and then verse 7, scripture speaking, he said he made known his ways to Moses, his act to the children of Israel. Somebody say, I just want to know the ways of God. Allow me to say to you that there is also the need for the act of God. In your life must not be empty. Your life must not be barren. Huh? Your life must contain the reality of the act of God. Huh? If they ask you that the Lord is a miracle working God, huh? you want to be able to say, listen, look at me. <laughs> I am a walking testimony. I'm a walking miracle. You want to be able to say at certain times and seasons in your life, huh? you have been hooked. Huh? At certain seasons in your life, you needed a miracle. Huh? And God came through for you. God came through for you. That's how to actively talk about the miracle working God. That's how to say that there is a God that acts in your life. Without the action, your life is barren. You see, I tell folks that the more of the miraculous you experience, the more of the reality of God you carry on your inside. The more the miraculous, the more they act. When they say that we are raising a generation and children who do not know God, is because the parents themselves have not been taught by the reality of God. It should not be the God of your fathers. It should be your God. Because there is a personal reality that you carry. You could talk about the times where you were stranded and it came true for you. You could talk about the time when your health failed and it came true for you. You could talk about the time when the professional said you would amount to nothing and the Lord came true for you. That talks about the personal act of God. Very quickly, let me tell you why people doubt the ability of God to perform. Why is it that we doubt the potency of God? You may have come to church today saying, I don't know. Is this God's potent? I've got God's word for you. Is God potent? I want to try and answer that question. Can he perform? One, number one reason why we doubt the potency of God is unanswered prayers. When people cannot find answers to their prayers, they will doubt the reality of God. One of the questions young people ask me in this generation is that, sir, 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 let's face it. Do God really answer prayer? I mean, this thing is just dice. I mean, it's just certain times something just happens. Uh, certain times it does not happen. And people ask that question because they have many unanswered prayers in their life. Especially when it seems like the things you need the most are the things you are not getting answers to. 
And the other things that you are asking of uh, that you didn't even really ask and pray for, that's the thing you're getting answers to. So you begin to doubt and say to yourself, are you sure this thing will be chance? It's like this is a chance. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> oh, so he gave you a job. You are saying, maybe they were just looking, maybe my city was just sweet. The relationship I've been asking for, I can't find. So you begin to doubt the reality of God. I remember I was talking to a young lady and they fasted so much, their dad was sick. They fasted so much, prayed so much, and the father did not get healed. Eventually, they came back. Um, I mean, they had to do a surgery. The father got healed. I mean, got better, got healed after the surgery. And they came back to Nigeria, and they even did a testimony in church. And the father had a relapse and died. Now, I'm telling you that that lady, there is nothing I have not done to try to convince her to go back to church. She says church is a scam. God is his scam. Why? Because she found a reality of an unanswered prayers. I'm telling you why God, people doubt the potential of God. Are you glad you are in church today? Number two, broken commitments and relationships. The reason people doubt the reality and the potential of God is broken commitments. Broken relationships. I don't know whether you have ever invested in a relationship. I don't mean you did it for one year. I mean you had a relationship for five years. People in the neighborhood knew that this is who you are going to get married to. I had, I had a sister like that. I mean, we were serving in New York, and then she came and said to me, uh, you know, my brother, my, my fiancé's family are having, the brother was getting married, so I want to go. And some of us decided to just follow her. You know, when we got there in Delta State, it was fantastic. It looked like they were already wedded. Glory to God. And so, I, I remember after NYC, I was, called, I was talking to her and I asked her. I said, hello, how are you doing? She said, I'm, I'm no longer in that relationship. I said, I don't understand. I mean, the house we stayed in Benin was the house they are taking together. If you know that kind of, they were already planning for wedding. And they had already bought fridge. They had done things in the house. And so this guy finished from medical school you know you have to be careful of doctors sometimes uh, this guy finished from medical school and then went to abuja for housemanship uh, and then called and said i've just found love I, I don't know whether it was a stretch he was doing with the lady but he found love uh, and so the lady began to question the the existence of god that she was a god lover I mean, I prayed before I entered that relationship. I was hearing God in that relationship. And this is happening to me. Another reason? Sickness and the loss of loved ones. People doubt the potential of God when they are in the sick place. Oh, he himself bore your infirmities upon the cross. How many of you know that scripture? But you, have you ever needed it? You know, you can quote the scripture. And it's a reality. But the, the, it's different from when you need it for life. When the doctor's report said, we don't know what is wrong with her, maybe you should take her home. And then you began to pray. You began to see the, see the face of the Lord. You begin to say, God, what will you do? And nothing happened. Number four, when there are unfulfilled desires and expectations. Have you ever been disappointed? The, the money was, I mean, you had agreed on the deal. It's like, it's your deal. I mean, you, you know it's yours. And suddenly, suddenly they said they are not giving you anymore. I mean, you, you latch on, you probably even latch on to the prophetic word. They say something in church, you latch on to it and say, ha, ah, that is it. Oh, glory to God. Or maybe it was a guy that you, very close to you, you know this ego ministry, very close to you, he was going to talk, he was going to talk, and eventually he told you that he's getting married. <laughs> and so you can't ask to woo because he didn't ask you out for marriage. You already know that this one is a very fresh breakfast. Disappointment. Disappointment. When desires are not delivered, it causes disappointment. And people begin to say, we've been praying. Especially now that the man of God has said, you guys should go on 14 days prayer and fast." Some of you came late to church because of prayer and fasting. You could not even stand up on the bed. I mean, it, I, I understand that it's been a journey for some of us. Uh, because some of us have not. I mean, some, somebody told me that. I said, how is it going? Because I try and check on one, two persons. How is it going? He said, it's been a long time I've done this. So even the body is just getting back. No way you have not used a car for a while. It's just getting back to shape up. 
Number five, why do, we, why do people doubt the ability of God? Barrenness and unfruitfulness. Barrenness and unfruitfulness. Have you gotten married? Have you found people who got married and you could swear they were virgins? And then they got married and they, could not, they can't get a child. And it appears to you that even those who are not faithful, they are on their third child. And she begins to say, what did I really even gain? What did I gain? I have been praying. Some of you have casted out devils, casted out demons, just for a guy to come. He has not come. He has not come. Some of you have been looking for the right woman. Looked everywhere. In fact, you've come to do. I've searched all over. I couldn't find nobody. You can't find anyone. It seems like the more you think she's the one, the, the more they disappoint you. Of fruitfulness. Barrenness. You see, when a married woman gets, when, when, a mar- when a woman gets married, after first year, second year, she can't have a baby. Something happens in her. Something happens in her. So that when you begin to hoop as a preacher, say, God can do all things. God. And she looks at you and says, what else would you say we should try? Because all the formulas may have failed. Why do people get disappointed? Wrong teachings that raise false hopes and unfounded expectations. You remember the days of miracle money? Do you remember? Oh, you will find miracle a lot. I saw people, okay, and then they didn't have anything at home. He said, if anybody will have miracle a lot, it should be me. And instead of having miracle a lot, they were even losing money. Wrong expectations. I remember, I don't know whether they taught you and they preached to you when you became born again that when you give your life to Jesus, your problem just disappears. First hopes. First expectation. In as much as you are in this world, man, Job said, is of little days, I'm born to trouble. Jesus said, uh, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer, celebrate, I have overcome the world. Is God potent? Can he perform? Was that not the question that decided who the true God was in Israel? You remember the story? They said, uh, is Baal God? Or is Jehovah God? The question could not be answered. And then they decided, who is he that will perform? Whoever performs is God. So it's called the battle of the girls. Whoever comes with fire, answers with fire, he will be God. He will be the God that Israel will serve. Whoever can answer with fire. As scripture says uh, that they call upon Baal. And they call all day long. And Baal did not respond. Because Baal could not perform. Baal was not potent. But scripture says that Elijah set the altar and called upon Jehovah. And fire came down. That tells you that there is a God of potency. That tells you that there is a God who answers by fire. Today, the question like of old is still... Is God potent? The promises and the prophecies about our healing, our joy, our relationship, our career. What we are asking is, can God perform these things? Can God perform these things? Do you have promises in your life? You know, I've, I've, I've set you in thinking mode. But, but, but do you have promises in your life? Do you have expectations that are not yet fulfilled? My question is, can God manifest these things? Somebody said, you know, I've had God speak that I don't even want to hear him speak again. Because the promises of 2021 are still there. The one of 2019, they are still there. I told myself, and I I, I was not planning it in vain, that before 25 I will be married. Now you are in 30s. What is going on? Can God perform? The question borders on potency. And what is the meaning of potency? It is the power of something to influence. The word potency is the power of something to influence, act, or make an impression. God, we are therefore asking, can God influence my life? Can God make an impression in my health? Can God act in my life? Can God act even in my business? That is what that question of potency, can God perform? The word performance has an undertone of doing. But possessing the ability to do to get a task done. Possessing the ability to do that to performance, to get a task done. 
To perform, therefore, means to do as expected. Understand that? If I tell you, I say, let us travel together, and I ask you, can you drive? And then I give you the sharing, and you begin to drive. When we get there, people ask me, did he perform? I'll say, yes, he did well. Understand that? If you give somebody, maybe a driver, a chef, or all these, uh, um, uh, maybe a caregiver and all of that, the, the question to ask is, did the person perform? That means uh, that the person performed, does it do the task? Because there is a task. Now, all of us also have an expectation as it concerns God. The question is, looking at the end of your life, would you be able to look back and say, God did everything he asked for? He said, he will do. To perform means to keep a duty to live a life. Now, I want to show you two scriptures that would prove, because I don't want to use a plethora of scriptures, uh, even to tell you about the performance of God or the ability of God to perform. And I want to start by looking at Luke chapter 1 and then verse 45 that we started with. I, I'm going to use Luke 1, 45, and then I'm going to use Philippians chapter 1 and then verse 6. Uh, Luke chapter 1 and then verse 5. Uh, the word performance there, you see, the Bible says in Luke chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, blessed is she that believe, uh, because there shall be a perf- 45, all right? Luke 1, 45, uh, the Bible says there shall be a performance. Blessed is she that believed, uh, because there shall be a performance uh, of that which is said to are of the Lord. That word performance there is the Greek word teleosis. Teleosis. If you want to spell that, it's just television. T-E-L-E-I-O-S-I-S. Teleosis. And what does that word teleosis, what does it mean? It means completion. It means verification. It means perfection. You know, we use a word it's, you can verify. You understand? Well, what you're saying is you can go and do the teleosis on it. You can, there is a performance. I'm sure of that. Uh. So I'm saying that God can be verified uh, because he is proven beyond doubt before and again that whatever he has promised, he is able to perform it. And so you can say, go verify it. Uh. It is clear. That's the word teleosis. The Bible was speaking. He said, for God, he said, blessed is she that believe because there shall be a performance. There shall be a teleosis. There shall be a completion, a perfection, or what you call an absolution, which is the word from the word absolute, of everything he has said unto you. So whatever God has said, there will be a performance. There will be a teleosis. Meaning that God will not abandon you halfway. That's the word completion. That's the word performance. He will not just do a little. He will see it to the end. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that when you say it's a broken relationship, that's not God. Anything broken that didn't get completed, that's not God. God will ensure that whatever he has started, he was going to finish. And that's why the song we sang. You finish what you started. Whatever he starts, he is the God of teleosis. He's the God of completion. Bible says, blessed is she that believes. So how would you see a performance? There must first be a believing. Do you understand that? If I'm going to come into the completion, I must believe that he who has promised is able to bring it to perfection. Because the word complete and the word perfect in Greek is actually the same word. It's the same word. So if he promised, he's not going to abandon you halfway. Look at your neighbor and say, he's not going to abandon me halfway. He promised, he's going to fulfill it all. He's going to fulfill it all. And Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, uh, the Bible says, He who has begun a good work in you. He who has begun. Do, is there somebody here who feels that God has begun a good work in their life? You, you, can't, you are not there at the end. But you have a feeling, God has begun a good work. Do, do I have people in this house? People in this house, uh, who knows that God has begun a good work? The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, uh, that he who has begun a good work is faithful who also will complete it. Is faithful who also will do it. And that translation says, uh, he who has begun a good work is able to also fulfill it. Uh, that word to fulfill is the word epitelio. Somebody say, why did you guys like Greek so much? It's the word epitelio. What does that word epitelio mean? Epitelio is just spelled E-P-I-C-E-L-E-O. Epitelio. What does that word, what does it mean? Uh, that word actually means uh, that he can execute. I love that word execute. It means he will go further. It means uh, that he will accomplish. You know, you don't terminate a contract until the contract has come to an end. When you, so God is able, whatever he began with you, he's able to accomplish it. Whatever he began, it might be a faith work. It might be a spiritual work. It might be a, a spiritual gifting. You might discover that you are now on a spiritual journey. Whatever it is he has started with you, he can complete it. 
look at your neighbor and say you can complete it. So when the scripture speaks about perform, it's speaking of the ability of God to finish, to execute, and to perfect all that concerns you. I want you one minute to look at the project God has started through you. It might be a venture, it might be a business, it might be a relationship, it might be a job. I just want you to think, just take a minute and say, and just look at it. He's able to complete it. He's able to take you to the fulfillment of that vision. He's able to take you to all of the attainment of what he has promised you. God is able. In fact, when we talk about is God potent, one of the names we call God, tell me one of the names we call God. Omnipotent. It means the one who is all powerful. The one who is all powerful. Omnipotent. It means that God has unlimited authority and power on the earth. Unlimited authority and power. Let me explain that to you in the way you will get it. You know that the governor of Lagos State is powerful in Lagos State. Is that not so? But you heard me say he's powerful where? He's powerful in Lagos. So Lagos is richer. Is that not so? Than um, a state like Ogi. Why are you looking at, sorry, I mentioned the estate, sorry, but we shall have to use a state, okay? Uh, it's richer than, than, I'll continue it, yeah. it's richer than the governor of Gogi. Lagos is richer than the, like the, oh God, what is, Lagos state is richer than Kogi state, is that not so? Now, it therefore means that because it's richer, and then there are more population of people is leading, is governing over, it, it seems like he's more powerful than the governor of Kogi state. But that is not true. Because you see, even when he makes his law and then he steps down here, people answer to him here. But do you know that when he gets to Kogi and he starts saying, this was going to happen, the governor's going to look at him and say, no, be for here. He says, no, 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 it can't be here. What, what, what are you saying? What, it can't be here. You know what they are trying to tell him? You have authority in your domain. Your domain does not get to this place. You have authority, right? But your authority does not get here. You see, you can't come to my house and tell my wife to cook you for yam. Are you following me? You can tell your wife to do that, but you can't tell my wife. You know why? Your authority ended in your house. In the moment you entered my house, your authority has ended. Are you following what I'm saying? So uh, there is something called authority. But authority is many times within a domain. But then I talk about the unlimited authority and the unlimited power of God. It speaks that the authority and the power of God is without domain. Without domain. Therefore, even if your helper is in the US, his authority gets to that place. Even if your helper is in Congo, his authority gets to that place. If his authority, if your helper is in Nigeria, or even in the Aousa people land, or Igbo people land, or Yoruba people land, it doesn't matter. God's power gets to that place. People say, when you see a king, you must prostrate. I say, it's not compulsory if I'm not from his domain. But there is a king of kings. There is the lord of lords. He is without domain. is limitless. And therefore when he speaks in Nigeria, he reverberates in the US. Are you following what I'm saying? He's talking about the ability to perform. God is potent. God can do what he says he will do. Ephesians chapter 1. And then you begin to read from verse 17. The Bible says, thank you to the lord God of, of, our, of our father, of our lord Jesus Christ who has given unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of him, that your eyes of understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints, uh, and the greatness of his power towards us who believe. Uh, there is something called the greatness of his power. Ephesians 1, 19. Uh, there's something called the greatness of his power towards us who believe. Uh, Bible says in 2.10, Colossians uh, say we are completing him. We're talking about the potency of God. Uh, we are completing him. Uh, who is the heir of all principalities uh, and powers. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 uh, and then verse 16. Uh, the Bible says all things were created for him. Uh, visible and invisible. Uh, dominion of uh, principalities, powers. Uh, all things were made through him. Uh, and for him. Uh, glory to God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Bible says he uphold all things uh, by the word of his power. Uh, he uphold all things uh, by the word of his power. Jeremiah 32 27. God himself was making a boast. He said I am the Lord. He said there is nothing too hard for me to do. That was what uh, the angel was also saying in Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 1 37. Uh, he said uh, and with God nothing 
shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. I don't know what you came here for. I don't know what is troubling you, but I come to tell you that there is a God. With him, nothing is impossible. It might be barrenness. It might be stagnation. It might be deliverance. It might be hopelessness. But there is a God who changes all things. It is the hand that is stretched forth and no one can turn him back. Isaiah 14, 24. He said, I proposed a thing. He said, so shall he stand Three verses later, 27. He said, as surely as I proposed, so shall he stand. He said, I'll stretch forth my hand. He said, who can turn it back? Who can turn it back? There is a God, even of all possibilities. There's a God of power. There's a God of power. Let me look at your neighbor and say, my God is powerful. My God is powerful. He's so powerful. He just said it and the sea parted speaking alone speaking alone when you speak of God's power there's no equal to it God will perform his word how do I know Jeremiah 1 12 the Bible says he watches over his word to perform it now I want to quickly equip you about true knowledge about God's word True knowledge about God's word, about God's potency and performances. True knowledge. Because many times we walk with false knowledge. We walk with as ignorant folks. But what are the true knowledge about God's word? Number one, God's word is sent for a purpose. Do you understand that? That God does not just speak. To every word there is an intention in the mind of God. God doesn't just act. He doesn't just speak. He's not a parrot. He doesn't speak senseless words. He doesn't speak meaningless things. God speaks because he has something to perform. Isaiah 14, 27. Surely as I propose, it will stand. It will stand. It will stand. Oh, so God speaks his purpose. That's what God speaks. His intention is what God speaks. 107, 20. The book of Psalms. The Bible says he sent for his word. And his word is and delivered them. He sent the word. So God's word will fulfill his purpose. I don't know what God said to you. It might be 10 years ago. But in as much as you can recall it. There is a coming to pass of that word. There is a purpose. In God's word. Sometimes God's word is not performed in our life. Because we are no longer in sync with the purpose of God for our lives. Do you understand? Do you hear that? Sometimes God's word is not fulfilled in our life because we are out of sync with God's purpose for our lives. Therefore, you must always live in line with God's will for your life. Number two, there is also a time manifestation for God's will. I'm telling you why people doubt the potential of God because they don't have the true knowledge. They don't understand that there is a time manifestation for God's will. God's will does not just come to pass because he said it. There is a time for it to come to pass. God will perform his word, his promises concerning your life at his own time. There's a time for the manifestation of the mind of God concerning you. There's a time. Israel was in slavery for 400 years. Listen to this. In the 200th year, there's no prayer they could pray that would have made them be delivered. Are you following what I'm saying? There was no prayer because in the mind of God, it would take 400 years. 400 years. They were also sold again, the second slavery, to Babylon. 70 years. God has said it. God has said it. Nothing will make it not come to pass. Jeremiah 29 verse 10. He said, for thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, he said, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you. So there is a time for God to come through and perform his good word towards you. The problem many times is that we give up before the time comes. The problem many times is that we gave in to pressure. We gave in to peer pressure before the time comes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2, in the appointed time. So there is an appointed time. He said in the set time, see I will favor you. Say in the set time, see I will hear you. God, yes, when the time comes, he will come to you. Have you ever been in periods where it seems to you, people call it carious moments. When it seems like everything just 
happen at the same time and everything just start happening and start falling into it because you are in sync with carriers. But before that moment comes, it may look like you are struggling. Man of God, don't give up yet. It may not seem to make sense yet, but at the end of the time, carriers will happen. You will get to that time where everything will fall in place and fall into the line. The Bible says in Jeremiah 3 verse 14, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will perform the good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel. The days come. Help me look at your neighbor and say, Behold, the days come. That he will fulfill what he has promised to you. Behold, the days come. Glory to God. Number three. God's word comes with an inherent ability for performance. Listen, inside of every word of God is the ability to make it come to pass. Inside every word. Listen, God's word by itself will make itself come to pass. It doesn't need any propeller. It doesn't need any propelling force. By itself, it will come to pass. Many times people try to make the prophetic word come to pass. But you just cover those are just exercise in futility. Ezekiel 12, 25. For I am the Lord, I will speak. And the word that I speak shall come to pass. He didn't say may. He said shall come to pass. When God gives his word, it's not time to begin to pray. It's time to align. To align. Because God's word will come to pass. God's word is powerful. You know it's powerful? It's for Ecclesiastes. Bible says where the word of the king is, there is power. Where the word of the king is, there is power. The Bible says the word of God is sharper than two edged sword, piercing, piercing, dividing her. Hebrews chapter 4, and then verse 12. Psalms 119, 89, 119. I love 119, 162. The Bible says, I rejoice at your word, like they that are find grace for. I rejoice at your word. The word of the Lord, when I see them, I begin to dance. Listen, many of us receive the word with joy. But because the time is being delayed, uh, we have gathered into sorrow. It's time to begin to rejoice. It's time to rejoice. It's time to rejoice. Glory to God. Number four is word is given to chart the course of your life. God's word will tell you the direction your life should go. I tell people that God's word is my Google map. <laughs> It's more than Google. Let's call it the God map. What tells me my decision? The word of God. I've got a God map. You can be using Google. I tell people that, you know, you can ask Google for anything now. Google, what, can I eat? what should I eat in the morning? It will answer you. Say, eat light. Suggest things like bread and tea. It will tell you. Google. But you see, there is a God map. The God map for my life. It tells me what to do per time. It tells me what to do per time. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. They have the understanding of time and they know what Israel should do by time. Because you can do the right thing at the wrong time. I know what to do by time. It charts the course of my life. Because the word of the Lord is effectual. It's effective. You remember Israel was faced with what I call a checkmate. Exodus 14. With what I call a checkmate. In front of them was the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army was behind them. They were flanked even with, with rocks and hills. There was no way to go. Exodus 14, 15, God answered Moses. He said, why do you cry it out to me? Why? He said, go forward. He said, why do you cry out? Straight out your rock and go forward. March. And what did they do? They went forward. What charted that course? The word of God. This Romans chapter 2, verse 3. God said to them, you have moved around this mountain enough. He said, it is time to go forward. When God's word comes, begin to plan for forward movement. You may not see the path because they saw the Red Sea, but God has said, go forward. You remember Joshua? Joshua was going to the land of promise, leading Israel. Moses had passed. Bible says they got to a place where Jordan was. And there was no way to cross Jordan. And God said, go forward. And they looked at Jordan. There was no forward movement. This is water. But God said, I'll give you the land. Like he has told you to, he will give you the land. But all you see are Jordan. Lack. That's what you see. I don't have men. How will this thing be? God said go for Jordan was in front. But Bible says that as for us, the people who carry the ark of the covenant, the priest put their leg in the water. The water parted. 
It tells me something. Without the putting of the leg in the water, the water will not have parted. What does it mean? It means to furnish and to accomplish. A greater end is coming this year and next year. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to go with confidence. All right? In a way, my sermon, I think, has ended. Because in a way, they have helped me to finish it. Glory to God. Now, I, but, but, but to tie this all together, I want to share with you what I call the prophetic insight for 2022. Prophetic insight. There are areas you and I must trust God for performance. We must believe for a teleosis, a finish in a completion and absoluteness. And it is possible in God. As we press further in 2023, God will have me tell you and prepare you for areas where you must get ready for performance. Alright? Are you following me? Some people have no snap it. No need to get ready for performances in this area. Number one, concerning his words and promises. There will be a fulfillment that you will be amazed and say, Why, how is he coming? Because you are going to enter into carrier human as it concerns the performance of God's word. I don't know how long it has been that certain words have been hanging in your life, but prophetically 2023 is that year where performance is coming. Is somebody saying amen? In 2023, there is performance of your mental promises, financial promises, vocational promises, all that God has said, all that God has said. But don't forget the secret is for you to believe. Blessed is she that believes. I maybe we should not use she for you because you are a guy, right? So if you are a guy, you can. But the scripture says, Blessed is she that believes. And then number two, there will be performances in supernatural endowments and giftings. Listen, God will have me tell some people here that, you know, at certain times and period in your life before, you are working in certain prophetic gifting. You are working in certain spiritual gifting. But it seems now that it has ceased. That the visions are stopped. And you begin to wonder what happened. God is saying that I'm coming again. I'm furnishing you with them again. I'm accomplishing it in you again. There will be supernatural endowment and gifting. And then number three, there will be completion and finishing of abandoned projects. Abandoned projects. You know, in Africa, we have an idea of believing that abandoned projects are houses that they are building. I don't know who told us that projects are only houses. So when we say, ah, I have an abandoned project, you don't even ask. You believe he's building a house somewhere that he has abandoned. You know, that's a lazy way of thinking. Abandoned projects, not talking about houses alone. Some of you are supposed to have waxed some albums. Some of you are supposed to have started out writing a book. You left them. Some of you abandoned even certain instructions of God. You, you took one move and you stopped. Abandoned. In 2023, you, there will be completion. In 2023, there will be completion. In 2023, there will be performances. Somebody said, God called me to the prophetic. And you prophesied one time before. And people knew you carried God. But in 2023, that will not just be a sudden occurrence. That will be your concurrent realities. In the name of Jesus. And I love this. When he told me number four, I really love that. Sure. He said there will be grace lifting. I said, I don't understand. He said there are lifting by work. There are lifting by people. He said, but there are lifting by me. Grace lifting are lifting by God. In 2023, there will be grace lifting. God will lift you up. Far above your colleagues. Shoulder high above everyone. Grace lifting. I, I, I think I wrote something here. Grace lifting. This will be only him and not man. You see, there are results we have in our lives that we can explain them. That is not grace. When you see unexplainable results, that is grace. I'm asking you to be ready for unexplainable results. Unexplainable results. Somebody say, how is it that you found it so far? He said, because the God of my fathers were with me. How is it that it happened to you so far? Because the God of my fathers were with me. Is somebody excited for 2023? Because what has taken you 20 years and you did not find, you will find it now. You will find it now. You will find it now. 
there will also be a performance, uh, a teleosis uh, of his power. That means that there will be things uh, that will be by his power. When they say, ah, ah, it, you they know, you say, no, be me, not God. It is God. Because there will be so much display of his power in your life. So much display of his power. So much display. Somebody will seek you, lay hands on them. You say, they said it, to let me. You were just trying it. You were just trying it, and it happened. I told you about how I lay hands on somebody, and she fell, and I ran. Are you following what I'm saying? You know, when this, this generation, when people fall, they stay there. <laughs> when the person fell, me, I ran. Because I knew that was not me. That was God. Glory to God. You will see things happen for you that even you, you want to go on a flight. Because you, when people say, Papa, how is it you are driving a Prado? <laughs> how, how is it? How, how? I tell people, and I want you to do this. When 31st of December comes, snap your account balance. Because one of the areas where there will be display of power is in our finance. So that when 31st of 2023 comes, someone say we will die. No, we will die. But you see, that is not your portion. Those who have vision don't die. Those who are living for God don't die. Because there is a plan for your generation. There is a wisdom to live by. When you now snap 2023, you compare. You say, this is the display of God's power. This is the display of God's power. You know, I was thinking, I said, ah, if I pay this bill, it means I have to stay one year in this place. And then it came to me that you don't have to stay one year in that place, even though you pay. Because there is an, an increase that makes that place uncomfortable and your account means it's not a pleasure. Have you seen people who left houses when their house is not due? I don't talk to me. Have you seen? Telling yourself that it is not due is because Koti were uncomfortable. You see, there is a lifting that God will bring your way. <laughs> Even it's not safe for me to be here. You will move and they will ask you what happens to the house. You say, I will give you the key. I will give you the key. When I have time. Because it is not due. It's just that you are due for a move. So God moved you. It was not because your rent was due. It was because you are due for a move and God moved you. Somebody following me. I'm giving you the blueprint of God for 2023. I nailed down. I told God, he said, don't worry. Tell them. For as many as believe, there shall be a performance. You see, I said those performance things, not for that message, it's for this. This is why we came to serve. There will also be an unraveling of your next level in purpose. You see, there is what is called your work. There's what is called your purpose. Many of us have moved in purpose and we are on a level for many years now. God said to tell you that it's pushing you up. It's pushing you further. Is increasing you. So that when you have been a blessing to 20 men, when you have been a blessing to 40 boys, when you have been a blessing to just a few, is increasing you to more. Increasing you to more. Don't be afraid of pressure this year, 2023. Why? Because it is increasing your capacity to contain more. It's increasing your capacity to become more in God and for God. And then finally, there will be a new walk with the Spirit. A new walk with the spirit. Spiritual growth like never before. A new walk with the spirit. In places where you have been praying. And that means you want to die. You will just keep pressing in. And we are not just pressing in so that we can go and boast. It's because we are having fellowship with the divine. It's because you and God were in a koinonia. And it was too sweet for you to let it go. A new walk in the spirit. A new walk in the spirit. There shall be a performance. A new walk in the spirit. I don't know about you, but I get tired of a present level. I get tired of a present level. Because I know there is more in God. There is more in God. I remember those days. When I lay hands. I let people fall. And the anointing moves. So people get healed. People experience God. And I began to say, God, why do I have to lay hands? JP, you are there. Just move without me. Just move. It is not me. It is not the hand. It is you. So you don't need my hand to move in the life of your people. Just move. 
Just move. Because you, when you want it to be about your habits, because there's still a canality and a level of ministry that you are still hold. But I began to say, God, you can do it in spite and in spite of me. And then I began to see another level. Just as I preach, some people will just be there, crying. Just be there, crying. Some people will come after and say, I saw an angel. I saw God. The many things began to happen in the spirit. Why? Because I press him for more. Look at your neighbor and say, this is the year to press. Look at your neighbor and say, this is the year to press. Look at your say, this is the year to press. This is the year to press. New level in the spirit. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. Stand on your feet. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. I mean, a no bracaliva, no bracale, and a motion. Look at those words. Prophetic insight into God's plan for 2023. And I want to give you five minutes to just begin to pray using those things. Begin to use those things to pray. I don't know which one eats you most. I don't know which one speaks to you personally. But begin to use those words and say you are the man of your word. You are the God of your word. Can you begin to press? Can you begin to press? Can you begin to press? The wine comes after the pressing. The wine comes after the pressing. The wine comes after the pressing. Mandale kata of radete kalatashi yadaba. The wine comes after the pressing. Mandale kata li kata re kata yana of radete kalatashi. Thank you for listening. This has been the Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.